<laughs> well, there is no question that this Federer-Nadal rivalry has been good for tennis, but where are the American men in center court? Uh, you just saw him. We have an American great here today. He's Jim Courier, the former number one seed and the four-time Grand Slam winner. Jim, great to have you with us. Thank you. And also, of course, Michelle Steele, who is our Bloomberg sports reporter. Right. And uh, Jim, I'm just personally curious, as, a, as an avid tennis watcher, right. um, how, much har how much harder is it to play in Wimbledon? Well, Wimbledon is, is a bit of a challenge for the players because there's not a ton of grass court tennis for the pros these days. It used to be that the U.S. Open and the Australian Open, along with Wimbledon, were on grass. So it was standard. But grass now is really just this one month for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it's a different surface. It's a very slick surface. Mm -hmm. uh, the ball is the, typically the fastest coming off of the grass. So a, a very, very difficult transition between the clay of, of Roland Garros. Now moving two weeks later, we're already starting at Wimbledon on a uh, an opposite surface, so right. it is tough for the players. The and the shoes, game's gotten faster, hasn't it? The game's it? In gotten faster. In the years faster. that you've played since, right? I think on average, everyone hits the ball faster. I think that the racket technology as well as the string technology has allowed the players to harness the power. And also, if you look at it, mm -hmm. male and female players right now, they're, they're getting bigger, they're getting yes. stronger, and they're getting faster. So we're seeing the evolution athletically of the sport as well in both sides, men's and women's. You know, Jim, I'd love to have you handicap Wimbledon for us, actually. We talked to John Sure. McEnroe last week, and, and here are his picks. And Nadal would be a slight edge over Federer. Um, I can make arguments for Roddick. I'd love to see him win another major. And the Scotman, Scotsman, Andy Murray. Uh, but to me, the two best guys are those guys. So I sort of would like to see one more of those finals. All right, so uh, he did pick Nadal there. Right. You know, Nadal is rated number one in the world, Federer number mm -hmm. two, but for Wimbledon, their seeds uh, right. are just the They're opposite flipped, of yeah. that. Who do you like? One word answer. Well, I, I disagree totally with, with John. <laughs> Let's start there. Okay. But I like Federer. You uh, cannot be serious, I'm Jim. dead serious. I like Federer. Uh, I think this surface plays into his hands. I think that um, Nadal can definitely beat Federer if they get there, but I think Nadal's more vulnerable in this tournament than Federer is in the earlier rounds. Right. So what does Nadal have to do to become one of the two greats? Obviously, he's won already uh, seven Grand Slams. How many more can he win? Well, first of all, if he wins Wimbledon, he has the career slam. He'll have won all four of the, sorry, if he wins the U.S. Open, he'll, he'll have won them all. Right. He needs to do that, okay? So let's start there. Uh, and I think that if he can stay healthy, he's probably going to do just that. He's already won the Australian Open, which mm -hmm. is basically the same surface as a U.S. Open. Yeah. Uh, I think I think he's, if he stays healthy, he's probably got another six, seven majors in him. Then you start to look at him with Federer in that conversation, uh, who's the best of all time. You know, Do you think be he'll be number one again, Federer? Uh, I think he's got a lot of work ahead of him. I think his best chance is if Rafa gets hurt. Jim, do you wish, though, that right now we weren't talking about Federer and Nadal, but maybe an American powerhouse singles player? I don't. I mean, look, I, would I love to see an American be number one right now? Of course. I mean, I, I have a certain bias there, but I, I'm a fan of great tennis and, and great tennis champions. And with Federer and Nadal, you have not only two of the best players, but also two of the best people who have represented our sport. I mean, these guys are incredible ambassadors for the game, and, and that's important. And, and Andy Roddick has had an incredible career that people uh, really have disparaged and yeah. not given him enough credit for. And if he wasn't playing in an era where Federer and Nadal were winning every single major, right. Andy Roddick would have at least three to four, if not five, Grand Slams in his back. Okay, Jim Courier, great to have you with us. And uh, for those of you who are big tennis players, Wimbledon gets underway in about three hours' time. We're going to be updating you on all the action.